Hey guys, so today we're going to show you how to build a leak down tester with just some spare parts you got laying around the garage. Okay, so for the people that aren't familiar with what a leak down tester does, essentially it's uh, almost the same as a compression tester, other than it uh, is a much slower and you're able to find out where a leak is coming from and just in what shape your cylinder is in. So um, when you pressurize the cylinder with air, you do it with a compressor this time, not just the en engine rotating. Um, and what that allows you to do is, is really control the amount of air that's going in to that cylinder. And, and then you can use your ear and uh, kind of figure out where the air is coming out of the engine. If it's through the crankcase, uh, then you got some bad rings. If it's through your intake, then it could be your, um, your, your valves are not sealing properly on your, on your head. Or if it's through your exhaust, it's the same thing with the exhaust valves. It can also leak to um, another cylinder. Uh, so if you hear it coming out somewhere else or through the cooling jacket, then you're, bu you're gonna bubble in your uh, degas bottle. So anyway. Let's build it and I'll show you how to build it at home. It's really quick and, and easy and uh, everybody should own one of these. All right guys, so I told you guys this was really easy to do. Um, so this is just a really crude uh, schematic of what kind of parts you're gonna be using. So um, you're gonna need an air compressor. So essentially the air is coming from the air compressor. It goes into a regulator. Now this regulator is set, to make our math easy, we'll set it to 100 PSI. And um, right here is, is really where the magic happens. So you need to have a small orifice uh, in this case, we're going to use uh, one millimeter or uh, 40 thousandths of an inch. And then essentially what you're going to be doing is if your cylinder is at 100% uh, sealing, then your regulator pressure, which is 100 PSI, is going to equal your gauge on the outlet pressure that goes to the cylinder. So what you're going to want to see is you're going to want to see this number here on this gauge uh, as close to 100% as possible. Now, I said we're going to use 100 PSI on the regulator to make our math easy. So let's just say on this gauge you're down to 90 PSI, then that's 10% leakage, that's 10% leak down in that cylinder. And um, really what this orifice does, and, and like I said, that's the meat and potatoes of it here. Uh, the orifice really allows you to inject just a very small amount of air into that cylinder so that you get this pressure differential across the orifice. And that's really what tells you your leak down. Okay, so like I told you, these are all parts that you can have at home and um, I've been have everything except this regulator sitting around. So I bought this on, on Amazon, I think it was uh, 10 or so bucks. Anyway, so this, this is really what you need here. Uh, essentially just a, a straight in and out regulator. Um, this gauge is a 0 to 200 PSI. So essentially what you're going to do is, this is a quick disconnect here to your air compressor. And what I'm going to do that kind of switch it up a little bit is, I'm going to put another quick disconnect right here. Uh, in the middle right after the regulator so that if I ever happen to just want to have a regulator for some shop purposes then I have one uh, available but that's not necessary. Um, this right here is just a uh, brass uh, union so you can see it's straight through. Essentially what we're going to do this is what we're going to use to create that orifice I was talking about. So I think what we're going to do is, is going to fill this up with uh, epoxy and then we're just going to drill a, a little hole uh, right through this and that'll be our orifice. And then we just have our outlet gauge. This is another zero to 160 PSI in this case. A brass T, uh, another union. And I didn't have this laying around, but essentially this is another, like a compression tester uh, hose. Essentially you use this to thread into uh, your spark plug hole. And this is used to hold your valve up in the cylinder head, like you pressurize your cylinder. Uh, if you wanted to just change some valve train components without removing the cylinder head. So this just accepts this union uh, right in this end. So yeah, that'll make it really easy. All right, so I just went ahead and mixed a bit of epoxy here on this, uh, on this scrap paper. And we're gonna take the screwdriver and we're just gonna start filling up um, this brass union here. So take your time. All right, so you can see here, uh, I got this end all filled up. All we're gonna need to make sure we do is clean up the threads now, but we don't wanna bugger those up. Essentially, all you need is about a quarter inch, so all I did is I went about half um, the depth of the union, uh, and you can see the epoxy around the inside um, went about halfway, and so we're, now we're gonna have to just leave this overnight to cure, and we'll have to drill this tomorrow. Okay, so I'm just gonna set this to the side, let it dry overnight, and let it cure. Now, in the meantime, what we can do is we can actually start working on the rest of these fittings. So each of these will need to be uh, Teflon taped and, uh, and then uh, thread it into the um, corresponding uh, union or uh, regulator. 
and then we will tighten everything up and uh, see how it goes. The only thing you gotta you want to make sure here is that putting your Teflon tape on here, you want to make sure you go in the direction um, that you're that you're gonna be tightening the fitting. So essentially, you're gonna want to put it on uh, clockwise. So here's an example. All right, so here's the end that I have, and if let's just say my my fingers were the uh, nut, um, if I'm tightening this on there, it's, all it is 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 uh, is making sure that that Teflon tape stays on to be fitting. If we were to put, put it on the other way, it's almost like it's loosening and this would be coming undone and you'd, you'd be left with this kind of slack on the other end. Okay, so now that everything's tight, we're pretty much done. Um, all we need to do is wait for our little epoxy uh, fitting here uh, to dry up and uh, drill a hole in it. Now, in order to drill a hole precise as we want, because that one millimeter orifice is really uh, crucial. So essentially what I did is I went to Harbor Freight, bought, um, well I had these laying around the house, but I bought these a couple years ago. They're just the numbered drill bits. And um, these are these are really precise, and they go to a really small number, so 60 gauge, um, which I think is like a uh, 30 thousandths of an inch or something like that. So essentially, what we're going to do is I have a set of uh, calipers here. We're going to go around and measure uh, the one that gets the closest to one millimeter, and that's the one we're going to set aside for tomorrow. Okay, so it ended up being a 59, uh, number 59 drill bit, which is uh, just a hair under one mil. It's at a 0 0.98 millimeters. Uh, what that equals to in inches is 37 thousandths of an inch. So tomorrow we're gonna put this in the drill press. Hopefully the drill press chuck is, um, is small enough to accept this, um, and then we'll go from there. So now it's the next day and we're ready to go drill our hole through the epoxy. The epoxy's all cured, it's hard, has a rock in there. So I got the 37 thousandths of an inch uh, drill bit in my chuck. It's in there solid, it's not wobbling around. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these channel locks and I'm gonna hold the fitting with that and uh, as I drill really slowly. And because it's just a small drill bit, I'm gonna wear some safety glasses. Uh, you never know when these things go flying or whatever. So here we go. So there is the hole, 37 thousandths. I just kept running the drill bit in and out until we just cleaned the hole up and it's nice and smooth. There's no epoxy left in there. So anyway, it's all, this is all done. Okay, so all, all I have to do now is to put some Teflon tape on our little orifice here and then thread it into our uh, quick disconnect and then again into our outlet gauge of the leak down tester. Okay, so this is what it looks like all assembled. Now, I just went and grabbed my air compressor fitting and we're gonna try it out. So, put the quick disconnect fitting in there. Okay, so I just had the uh, regulator the wrong way. You can see there's an arrow on the regulator. It tells you which way the airflow goes. Anyway, had that in backwards. So, now, we connect it uh, to our airline and you can see right now we're at uh, zero PSI. Nothing's flowing out of there right now. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my finger on the end of this and I'm gonna turn the pressure up Hopefully you guys can see that uh, on the regulator. So spin, and you can see the pressure on the regulator now equals the same pressure as this gauge here. So we're gonna crank this up, and I can't really hold it much more than 40 PSI. All right, so you can see if I let my finger off, my regulator's staying at 40 PSI, and my outlet gauge is reading lower. So the difference between these two gauges is your leak down percentage. All right, so that's how you build a leak down tester with just parts heavily around the house. Make sure you guys subscribe to see how this thing works in the next video. We're going to try this on the Audi. It's been burning a lot of oil, so who knows, we might have some, some issues. <laughs>